Is there anybody kind of standing out amongst the young guys, the guys that have only been here a year? Uh, all the young guys are starting to improve and show th more things that they can do. So uh, uh, with that question, all of them are stepping up to the plate. It's just everybody has something that they need to work on and improve. Yeah, Trayvon, um, obviously, you know, things didn't go the way you guys wanted to against Alabama. Yeah, uh, obviously, your job is up front and to uh, apply pressure and contain the run game and all those kind of things. But it seemed like you guys played pretty well against Alabama except for the explosives, right, uh, the, the big pass plays. What, what is – do you feel like you have a role in it? And, and what have you guys done to sort of, you know, address that not happening again? Uh, speaking on that game particularly, yeah, I just feel like we didn't – we got some hits, some good hits on the quarterback, but we didn't get there enough to be effective and help our cornerbacks and DBs out uh, by getting to the quarterback fast enough to prevent those explosive plays. But uh, we just came in, and that was one of the things we emphasized that practice for this week was get out the quarterback, finish twice. That was about it. Thank you. Let's go to Dasher and then Dean. Uh, hey, Trayvon. Uh, in what ways do, do you and Malik try to feed off each other, and how does that make you a better player? Uh, Malik, he's like my big brother, so I've been looking up to him ever since I was in middle school. He was in high school, like 15 minutes mm -hmm. of the road from me, so he just always, he's been I've always been one of those players to push me and help me be a better player, even though we play the same position mm -hmm. and finally competing against each other every day. He just motivates me to go hard. And even when he's hurting, he try to push himself. I push him, and he stays on me. I stay on him. Thanks, man. The Trayvon on the finish twice situation, how do you um, – you know, how tough is it when you can't quite get to the quarterback, and are there other ways to disrupt guys? Uh, when you can't quite get to the quarterback, like Coach Smart and Coach Lennon, I always emphasize uh, uh, if you run back to the ball, then maybe like a screen, you can help get in on that play. Just saying, if you don't get to the quarterback fast enough, you can still be effective in the play by chasing the ball down, not giving up on the play. Go to Brandon and then Mark. Hey, uh, Trayvon. Um, since you guys are from around the same area, um, I didn't know if you um, had any relationship with Karis uh, Jackson while y'all were growing up through high school, but – uh, whether it was then or even now, like three or a couple of years here um, in Athens, um, how have you kind of seen him kind of dedicate his success to the people around him, you know, always wanting to help other people? And, um, and like, how happy are you to see him have uh, the success that, that he's had early on? Uh, with Kiaris, I've been knowing Kiaris ever since high school, uh, playing seven on seven against him. And he's always been that guy just to go around smiling. He's a joyful person picking everybody up. And I've seen him, like, he'd have some injuries like me. And he's one of those tough guys that just fight through it and keep working to help better his team and himself. Trayvon, you guys are coming off a primetime game. You had a 3.30 game earlier this season. Uh, it's going to be noon, I guess, up in Kentucky. Um, you know, is that hard to get up and, uh, you know, get up early and uh, get ready to, to you know, play a physical game that, that hour? Uh, that's one thing that Coach brought up today was uh, starting to prepare our body to get up early, like early in the week so we can go on and get adjusted to having that noon game and getting up and eating pregame meal at 8 o'clock in the morning. Get do you have up a get body started. Yeah, do you have a preference when, when, when time's kick off for you? Say that again? Do you have a preference when uh, you, you play? No, sir. I just want to play football. Thank you. Go to Seth and then Mike. Trayvon, if you had to describe uh, Aziz Ojolari as a person, not as a player, but just as a person, what what would you say? Uh, Aziz, I'd say someone who who's he's doesn't want to be outworked. He he comes in and go hard every day, no matter what it is, academics, weight room, on the field. He's one of those players that's not going to be outworked by any other player in his position or any other player on the team. Trayvon, let me ask you, you've been playing sports a long time, man. You, you've, won, you've won, you've lost. When you lose a game like you lost to Alabama on national television in that manner, does it, is it personal? Is it something you internalize? Is it, is it a motivation to get back and play that team again? Is that going to be a driving force? Yes, sir. That is fuel to the fire. 
I, I guess just to expand on that, and you know, up to you how much it evolves, but what would be the best way to classify that, that, that post game? Again, like I said, I know you guys play a lot of football games, but what was that locker room like? Uh, it was just a learning experience going back and looking at the game. We seen like the D line, one of the things we emphasized, like you all said, that we had to get to the quarterback faster to help our DBs and corners out. So that's one of the main things that me and the D line group focused on. Let's go to Palmer and then William. Hey, Trayvon, y'all are averaging uh, just over 20 quarterback hurries per game. How would you assess y'all's ability to get to the quarterback? And obviously, you know, it was a little bit of an issue against Alabama. What, what are the expectations there, and uh, how can y'all improve there? Uh, way we improve there is just keep going to practice and working on our technique, getting better at hand blocks and things of that sort, recognizing the pass set or whatever it may be, just so that we can stay on top of that. Quick follow-up there. Is, is there a number-specific goal for the coach sets out for y'all in terms of quarterback hurries per game? Uh, no. Just go out there and get to the quarterback. Yeah, hey, Trayvon. Um, you know, going up against another a really strong offensive line, um, like, like you did against Alabama, um, what, what gaps did you, did you guys see as a defensive line group in stopping Najee Harris that you know that you can't repeat against this, uh, you know, really rush-heavy – uh, offensive Kentuckys? Uh, one of the main things we always talk about our uh, anger, like our nose, that's, he plays a big role in like the run game and gaps. And then outside, also on the outside, like closing, uh, we get the edge set and we have an anchor in the middle, then we, we're going to be hard to run, run on. Let's go to Lance and then Connor. Hey, Trayvon, you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, what is what are something you guys have been focused on, um, especially on this Kentucky offense that's been struggling over the past couple of weeks? And uh, you guys, which quarterbacks have you guys been? Uh, has it been Gatewood or Wilson who's been preparing for the most? Uh, they're both very athletic quarterbacks, so we really just don't train our mind for one quarterback. We train for both, and we look at them both the same. One may have more speed than the other, but still, as long as you do your job, you'll be good. Hey, Trayvon, what's sort of your stance or viewpoint on playing special teams, and how has that helped you become a better defensive lineman, if at all? Uh, playing special teams, I look at it as, like, just being an athlete, playing basketball. It helped me, like, get – I have more options playing special teams. That's one of the main ways you can get to the – help yourself get to the lead. So, I just not by playing D-line, but playing special teams, that can also help me get to the lead faster if things don't work as how I want to at the end. 